And today we are about to make history. An inventor named Julian Brown. He has apparently invented plastiline and plastidiesel. Now these are complete alternative fuels made entirely of plastic waste. When you throw away a plastic bottle, it probably goes into the ocean, a landfill or somewhere it'll sit for the next 500 years, poisoning the earth. But what if that same bottle could power your car tomorrow morning? That's exactly what a black inventor named Julian Brown figured out. And some people think that his discovery might have put his life in danger. You see, Julian Brown wasn't born into money. He wasn't handed a fancy lab or a team of scientists. He was just a kid from Tennessee who moved to Atlanta with a wild idea and the guts to chase it. At five years old, he told his mom something that would shape his entire life. He said, Mom, I'm gonna create something that changes the world. Most kids say stuff like that and forget about it by recess. Julian never forgot. By the time he was 17, while most teenagers were worried about prom dates and basketball games, Julian was learning how to weld in high school. Not because it was cool, but because he had a plan. He discovered something that blew his mind. Plastic is made from crude oil. And if it's made from oil, that means it can be turned back into oil. Back into fuel. He thought, if no one else is doing this, I will. So he taught himself. No degree. No fancy university. Just YouTube videos, trial and error, and a lot of burns and scars along the way. Julian started building his first reactor in his senior year of high school. A reactor is basically a machine that heats up plastic to extreme temperatures without oxygen, breaking it down into vapor. That vapor gets cooled and turns into liquid fuel, gasoline, diesel even jet fuel. He welded together metal drums and spare parts, rigged up solar panels to power the whole thing, and called it Plastiline. The name stuck. And so did the dream. But here's the thing. This wasn't some science fair project. Julian was dead serious. After high school, he didn't go to college. He didn't get a normal job. He started a handyman business just to pay the bills while he kept building. For three years, he worked on plastiline in secret, pouring every dollar he earned into parts, equipment, and research. No one was paying attention. He was just another young guy with a dream, working in the shadows. Then in early 2024, everything changed. Julian started posting videos on TikTok and Instagram showing his machine in action. He'd pour plastic bottles into the reactor, fire it up, and a few hours later, pull out liquid fuel in a jar. He'd start trucks with it. He'd demonstrate how clean it burned compared to regular diesel. People couldn't believe it. The videos went viral. Millions of views. Millions of people watching this young black man from Atlanta do what billion-dollar oil companies said was impossible. By mid-2024, Julian had over 1.7 million followers on Instagram and 1.3 million on TikTok. His videos racked up more than 16 million likes. News outlets started covering him. Forbes wrote about him. The Root featured his story. Local Atlanta stations showed up to film his reactor. He wasn't just some random guy on the internet anymore. He was becoming a symbol. A symbol that you don't need a PhD to change the world. A symbol that black innovators exist and are brilliant. A symbol that maybe, just maybe, we can solve the plastic crisis and the energy crisis at the same time. But all that attention came with a price. In May 2024, disaster struck. Julian was running a test on his reactor when something went wrong. There was an explosion. Flames everywhere. When the smoke cleared, Julian was on the ground with second-degree burns covering his ankles and feet. He was rushed to the hospital and needed burn surgery. Doctors told him how lucky he was to be alive. Most people would have quit right there, packed it up, called it a day. But not Julian. He saw it as a lesson. He admitted he'd been moving too fast, trying to impress people online, trying to keep up with the hype. He learned that in science, slow and steady wins the race. Rushing gets you hurt, or worse. While he was recovering, he had another problem. He needed a new place to work. The explosion had made his old location unsafe. He had to find new land, somewhere far away where he could rebuild. He found a spot, but it was four hours away from his home in Atlanta. Four hours. That means every single time Julian wanted to work on his machine, he had to drive eight hours round trip. But he did it. Week after week. Month after month. That's commitment. That's passion. That's someone who truly believes in what they're doing. By late 2024, Julian's hard work started paying off in a huge way. 
He got accepted into the 776 Foundation Climate Fellowship, a program created by Alexis Ohanian, the co-founder of Reddit and husband of Serena Williams. This wasn't some small-time grant. This was $100,000 over two years to keep building, keep innovating, keep pushing forward. Only 20 young people in the entire world get selected for this fellowship. Julian was one of them. A kid who taught himself everything, who had no formal education in engineering or chemistry, was now being backed by one of the biggest names in tech. It was validation, proof that his idea wasn't just some internet gimmick. It was real. He kept building. By early 2025, Julian was on his fifth version of the plastiline reactor, called the Mark V. Each version was better than the last. Cleaner fuel. More efficient. Safer. He even took samples of his diesel to a professional fuel testing lab in Washington called ASAP Labs. The scientists there were shocked. The fuel Julian made from plastic bottles burned cleaner than regular diesel. Cleaner. That's not supposed to happen, but it did. Julian had proof hard scientific proof that his invention worked. He started doing public demonstrations. In June 2025, he posted a video showing his reactor producing fuel in real time. Millions watched. Then, in October 2025, over a thousand people showed up in Atlanta to watch Julian pour plastiline into a 2023 Dodge Scat Pack and drive it around. The car ran perfectly. No problems. No engine damage. Just plastic waste turned into power. It was a moment that should have been celebrated everywhere. A young black inventor proving that we can turn our biggest pollution problem into a solution. But that's not what happened next. On June 14, 2025, Julian posted a video that made people nervous. He was outside at night, filming the sky. A helicopter was circling above him. Not a news chopper. Not a police helicopter. Just a dark, unmarked helicopter hovering in the middle of nowhere, shining a spotlight directly on him. Julian captioned the video, saying he was being followed. People thought he was paranoid. Some said he was looking for attention. But Julian wasn't laughing. He looked scared. Then on July 9, 2025, Julian posted what would become his last video for weeks. He was sitting in a car, talking directly to the camera. His voice was shaky. He said, I can't go into too much detail, but there is some very, very odd stuff going on. I'm certainly under attack right now in many different ways. I just want everybody to know to have your eyes open. I have my eyes open too, but there is a lot going on. I'm still working. I'm still building. Nothing's gonna stop that. But I'm just telling you guys right now, be on the lookout because I'm under attack. In the caption, he wrote, something is happening. Keep me in your prayers, please. Screen record this. I don't know. And then, nothing. Julian Brown went completely silent. No posts. No updates. No replies. Just radio silence. The internet exploded. People started panicking. Reddit created an entire community called Where is Julian Brown? On Twitter, posts about him got millions of views. People were tagging the FBI, tagging news outlets, demanding answers. Theories started flying. Some said he was kidnapped by oil companies who saw him as a threat. Others said the government silenced him because his invention could destroy the fossil fuel industry. Some even pointed to the long history of black inventors being erased, stolen from, or worse. People were terrified that Julian had become another name on that list. For three weeks, nobody heard from him. His mom, Nia Brown, stayed quiet at first. But as the rumors got crazier, she finally spoke to the Daily Mail on July 28, 2025. She said, I can confirm Julian is safe, but in the best interest of his security, I'm not able to provide any more information. Safe, but hiding. That's what it sounded like. The Atlanta Police Department confirmed they weren't investigating any missing person case with his name. No official reports. No FBI involvement. Technically, Julian wasn't missing. But he also wasn't there. Some people didn't buy it. They thought something darker was going on. Why would a 21-year-old inventor with almost 2 million followers just disappear? Why would his own mother refuse to say where he was? What kind of danger was he in that required complete silence? And why, out of all the inventors and scientists working on plastic recycling, was Julian the one who had to go into hiding? Here's the uncomfortable truth. Julian's invention, while amazing, isn't entirely new. The process he uses, called pyrolysis, has been around for decades. Scientists all over the world have studied it. There are even companies in Japan and India that sell small pyrolysis machines. So why isn't everyone doing it? because it's expensive. It takes a lot of energy, and in many cases, it creates toxic byproducts that are just as harmful as the plastic itself. Critics say Julian's version, while impressive for a self-taught inventor, 
isn't scalable. It might work in a backyard, but not on an industrial level. Not yet. But that's exactly what makes Julian's story so powerful. He's not claiming to have all the answers. He's not saying plastiline will save the world tomorrow. What he's saying is this. We've been told that plastic recycling doesn't work because it's not profitable. But what if we stopped seeing plastic as trash and started seeing it as energy? What if instead of shipping our plastic waste to other countries or dumping it in the ocean, we turned it into fuel right in our own communities? That's the vision. And it's a vision that scares a lot of powerful people. The global oil industry is worth over $4 trillion. $4 trillion. That's more money than most countries make in a year. If someone figured out how to make fuel from plastic waste, cheaply and efficiently, it would change everything. Gas stations could become plastic recycling centers. Cities could power their own buses and trucks with trash. The whole system would flip upside down. And the people who profit from the current system? They'd lose big. Now, there's no proof that Julian was targeted by oil companies or the government. None. But the fact that so many people believe it says something. It says we've seen this story before. We've seen brilliant minds silenced. We've seen inventions buried. We've seen people who dared to challenge the system pay the price. And when a young black man with no money, no connection, and no backup suddenly vanishes after creating something that could shake a trillion dollar industry, people get suspicious. Rightfully so. By early August 2025, Julian slowly started coming back online. He and his mom posted a video together explaining that he'd been advised by his Zyger security team and Meta to stay off social media after multiple hacking attempts and threats. He said he was safe, just being cautious. He thanked everyone for their concern and promised he wasn't going anywhere. He was still working, still building, still believing in plastiline. Today, Julian is back, but different, more careful, more private. His GoFundMe has raised over $30,000 and with the $100,000 grant from the 776 Foundation, he's continuing his work. He's building bigger reactors, refining his process, and planning more public demonstrations. In October 2025, he successfully powered a car on plastiline in front of over a thousand people. The dream is still alive, but the question remains, what happens next? Can Julian scale this up? Can plastiline actually become a real solution to the plastic crisis? Or will it stay a viral moment, a cool idea that never quite makes it to the mainstream? And more importantly, will Julian stay safe? Will he be allowed to keep building without interference? Here's what we know for sure. Julian Brown is brilliant. He's brave. And he's not giving up. Whether plastiline changes the world or not, Julian has already done something incredible. He's inspired millions of people to think differently about plastic, about waste about who gets to be called an inventor. He's shown that you don't need permission to change the world. You just need an idea, the courage to try, and the stubbornness to keep going even when it gets dangerous. So the next time you throw away a plastic bottle, think about Julian. Think about what it could become. And ask yourself, what are we willing to do to build a better future? Because if a 21-year-old kid from Atlanta can turn trash into fuel in his backyard, imagine what we could do if we all decided to care. If this story moved you, hit that subscribe button. There's so much more to uncover.